Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Sonoma V2, now sporting uh, micarta and a uh, steel liner lock instead of the original being a titanium frame lock. Now, uh, the original titanium frame lock uh, will be listed right down below. So I do have an affiliate link for retailers that are carrying that. This guy is only available on the uh, Giant Mouse website right now. So you can go there and check it out if you'd like to. Um, I want to thank... Uh, the Knife Eclectic on Instagram for sending this in. Please give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thanks so much to my generous patrons. You can find a link for my Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Follow me on Instagram. All right, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. I don't think it's too much different in terms of, well, there definitely are some differences dimensionally, a little tiny bit, but overall length is still coming in at right about eight inches on the dot. Blade length is still coming in. I think, I can't, it's hard for me to remember the original review. You can go back and watch it if you want. 3.4 inches of blade length is what I'm getting right here. And then the cutting edge is coming in at, because of a fairly generous forward choil, about 3.1 inches, just a little bit over three inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, and of course the Ontario Rat Model 2. This guy's kind of in between. It's got a slender, kind of skinnier profile. It still feels like a full-size knife. It's just not quite as tall or fat as the uh, Rat 1. Definitely longer than the Rat 2, though. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? Gosh, I love micarta. <laughs> I just really like it. The micarta was a good choice on this. Uh, definitely shorter than the PM2, definitely longer than the pair of three. Cutting edge is just a hair superior to the PM2. So I think that's important considering the, the ratios are a little better, obviously, on the uh, Sonoma versus the well-loved PM2 and pair of three. And last but not least, up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and its little brother, the Mini Griptilian. Uh, about the same length as the Ritter Hogue, uh, a little bit longer than the Mini. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here that the handle scales are including the contouring, right? It looks like they might be the same, but it's definitely a little bit thicker than the Para 3. But they're contoured, so you're getting something for that, right? This fills the hand, the contoured scales will fill the hand a little bit better than a flat sort of angular scale, right? Length and height up against the PM2 and pair of three. You can see here that this is a long skinny boy. It's not that much longer than the pair of three, but it's definitely shorter, even including the flipper tab. It's nowhere near the same height. This is gonna be a really easy knife to carry. The blade stock thickness on this guy is not anything substantial, but it's not super thin either. And because the blade is not super tall, it doesn't necessarily equivalate, is that the right word? Down to a uh, incredibly thin cutting edge, but it's thin enough, we'll talk about it. 135 thousandths or so, not bad. It's kind of the in-between, right? Not too thin, not too thick. Uh, weight on this guy. So the liner lock is definitely steel. We do have a lot of uh, uh, titanium. We've got steel pocket clip, steel countersunk liner, titanium backspacer. I think the pivot color is also titanium. And then a skinny, reasonably thick or reasonably thin, however you want to look at that, steel blade. This feels 3.5 to 3.75? Oh no, oh no, it's less than that and I'm just dumb. This is actually what I consider to be ultra lightweight on this channel. It's under three ounces. That's nice. Um, a lot of people say ultra lightweight is actually anything under 2.17 ounces. I don't care. <laughs> For me, it's under three ounces, right? So two, three, it's all trivial. Anything above three, I start to know. Anything under three, I don't notice it at all, right? Even though I just said, I guess that it was heavier. I don't know, for what reason, I have no idea. But there you go, right? Let's take a look at the inside here real quick, just so you can see the internals. And can you see in there? Yeah, the liner's just that one side. I don't know how much this is doing it any good. Oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. There is a steel liner on both sides. So that's nice. If you were wondering, one side is not just solid micarta. They, they, it has a steel liner throughout. 
that's nice. I like that. That gives it a little bit of extra rigidity or it just gives you the, it just makes you feel like, oh, it's solid, right? That's nice. I'd prefer to see that. Honestly, I don't care if it saves an extra quarter ounce of weight. I'd rather see that than just a solid piece of micarta or G10 or Grivery or Grivex or Grivex or carbon fiber, right? I'd rather, I like to have the metal in there. Uh, hardware check on this guy. Let's go ahead and get out my tools here real quick. Um, these knives tend to have the right, in my opinion, the right size of hardware. I believe it looks like it's going to be perhaps T8 throughout. T8 on the pivot, which is fine. T8 on the handle screws, which is fine. And T8 on the pocket clip screw. Wonderful. 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 That's exactly what I like to see. This should not be a problem to take apart. So that's just great. All right. So the flipping action, this guy is great. Um, you're not going to have, it's a little bit of a tighter action on the way back down. So you can definitely sort of shake it shut, but it's smooth and it's consistent, right? I don't necessarily need these knives to fall shut. It's easy to manipulate, not feeling any double clutch. Uh, the flipper tab is shaped in my opinion correctly. It's very low profile. So you need to make sure that your fingers on it pretty much dedicated diagonal, uh, approach, <laughs> approaching the flipper tab, right? you just light switch it and it's going to work, right? The D10 is also nice. Click. That's what I like to see. No um, detent lash or wiggle in the closed position. That always, I always hear people say, like, wiggle in the closed position is a problem. I didn't even know that. And now I'm realizing the knives that I'm holding while I'm watching your video have detent lash and I hate them now. Sorry. I don't like detent lash, right? That's just something that I point out. It's something that I look for. Um, but yeah, the flipping action feels great. Uh, this knife is running on bearings as, now wait a second, wait just a second here. Yeah, those are, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me take a look. Yeah, those are bearings. The knife is running on bearings as far as I can tell that it confuses me sometimes. I always initially while I'm kind of playing with it and feeling it, I have... 95% of me, you know, the really confident end of me says that I can always tell the difference between bearings and phosphor bronze, right? So initially, uh, I, I was like, yeah, this is bearings. But sometimes I look at those little edges right there and I think, wait, is it? But anyways, yeah, the action feels great. Um, the micarta on this just looks fantastic. I like this. It does come in a couple of different flavors of micarta. Uh, either way, you're going to have sort of the earthy tones. You can read about this knife on their website. It was absolutely meant to be more of an outdoor friendly knife. I'm not saying that titanium is not outdoor friendly. Obviously, there are benefits to titanium. Uh, it's not going to corrode. It tends to be a little bit more slippery. Um, but micarta outdoors, especially if you're working in moisture, tends to get a little bit slimy. Um, absolutely expect the micarta to darken up. It does that with hand oils. It doesn't bother me though, because micarta already gives it this sort of vintage worn look. So the more you use it, the more character it gains in that territory anyway. So I don't really have a problem with that. I think the bronze or sort of gold accents with the OD green micarta in this case really look good. If you don't like that, they have, like I mentioned, the tan. So that's great. Seating in the hardware, everything just looks excellent. The backspacer is titanium and it's also seated correctly. So fit and finish all the way around is fantastic. I love that they crown the spine of the uh, blade, right? Crown, radius, whatever you want me to say. People are like, actually, actually it's radius. Whatever. You know what I'm trying to say here, right? It looks great. I also like that they put the jimping out in an area where you're... <laughs> If you're going to do some delicate work, right, with the edge of the blade, it's nice to have the jimping out here. I mean, it's fine to have it back here, but truthfully, I can lock in back here without the jimping, even though it's flat, right? This is nice to have just a little bit more traction right there. You can choke up on this best case scenario. You can, you can choke up under the second knuckle or what I call it. You're pretty darn close to the edge. So be careful, be cognizant of where your fingers are. But because the flipper tab is nicely knocked down and it's not super like, look at me, I'm a flipper tab, right? Uh, you're going to be good choking back on that or kind of putting some pressure on it. You'll be okay. We have a belt satin finish, which is one of the only bummers on this knife. Um, I think, and I've always said this, I am biased against uh, satin finishes. I'm really bored with them right now. And I also have a strong bias towards a tumbled finish. I just think 
This knife looks kind of classy outdoorsman, right? I think the tumbled finish would have looked better in combination with the um, micarta, right? Sort of giving it that vintage look, right? The tumbled finish would have looked better. And I think it would also wear better uh, over time. It would kind of complement the entire look to the knife, but I don't know, whatever. Who's this made by? Crazy enough, this is made by Riot, which I believe the original was also made by Riot. Right? That explains the excellent tolerances, fit and finish, things like that. So that's cool. This is definitely one of the least expensive Riot knives that I've ever seen. If you don't know who Riot is, they don't make these, these, these knives are not made in the United States, but Riot has excellent manufacturing quality. There's a, by the way, uh, by now, most people know, most of the people watching this video know that Riot makes knives out of China. So I'm not trying to hide that. If I don't say it, it's because 99% of the people watching know that already. I do not have a problem with Riot. I own many Riots alongside many of my US manufactured knives. They have incredible fit and finish, incredible tolerances, incredible quality all the way around. So I think that's great um, that they used Riot for this. What's the blade seal in the sky? I believe it's L Max, which I don't have a problem with at all at this price point. In fact, I kind of wish that we'd see more of it. Stainless, plenty tough for what you're going to use it for. Great edge retention. Not an absolute nightmare to resharpen either, right? Fortunately, we have continuous belly here. I love how the blade looks, and I love the straight, simple sort of knife profile. This is one of those knives where, like, if you looked up a picture of a pocket knife on the internet, it's probably going to look pretty similar to this, right? There's a lot of knives that look fairly similar to this, and that's because profiles like this work. In fact, ergonomically, this is great. You can definitely feel the wire clip a little bit, but fortunately, it's rounded all the way around, right, like every other wire clip out there. So it works. This is comfortable, right? And because the scales are contoured, you do get that sort of confidence and hand feeling. Uh, the stop pin on this guy is internal and it is following the blade. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's pegs sort of following it and then it locks out on the frame right there. That makes sense why they've got the liners on both sides now because it gives that pin something to run into that's not micarta. We've got a flat that carries out about 65% or so the length of the blade and most of the draw, I mean like the, the, the drop is most of the height of the blade, which is nice. So they're dropping it as much as they can considering they've got you know, minimal height to work with here. So it's got a reasonably thin edge. It's not gonna be the thinnest thing in the entire world, but you're definitely gonna be able to poke stuff, breach, right, whatever you wanna do, and it'll definitely slice. If you're looking for a knife that will shave the fibers off of a uh, the surface of toilet paper, that's weird. Uh, this knife isn't that knife, but it will definitely serve uh, in the, the role that it was meant to, to serve in, right? Which is your generic sort of light to medium outdoor use. Um, so fantastic, mission accomplished there, right? Backspace, like I said, looks good. We have a lanyard hole that I guess you could argue is being, it is, it's being prioritized over the pocket clip. This area should have been totally, saw, like this screw didn't need to be there. You could have used the screw for the pocket clip to hold in the backspace, so the pocket clip could have been a little higher. It doesn't necessarily need to be ultra deep, it just frustrates me when we have a lanyard hole that's being prioritized, because the vast majority of people won't use that, right? So, outdoor use, I'd probably want the knife to be sunk as low as possible into my pocket if I'm gonna be outside you know, stomping around, jumping around, doing a bunch of stuff. I'd probably want that sunk as deep as possible. So it would have been nice to just see a lanyard bar as part of the backspacer and have that pocket clip way up here. But that's kind of a preference thing. I don't know that I can really count it off of that because again, the carry depth on this guy is pretty good. The surface of the micarta is nice and smooth and contoured. So that wire clip is gonna have no problem passing over just about any thickness of pocket seam. I don't necessarily love how the wire clip looks, but I can't deny that it's incredibly functional and you can switch it to the other side. So lefties, even though this is a right-handed liner lock, you can see here, no problem manipulating this guy with my left hand. So I, and a lot of people could argue that it's even more comfortable <laughs> as a right-handed person, for whatever reason, sometimes liner locks feel more comfortable to disengage with the left hand. So, it's pretty, it's pretty ambidextrous, right? This is a steel liner lock, so no need for the insert. We are locking up at about 25%, 25 to 30%. There is no blade play up, down, left, or right. And the blade is perfectly centered. So, little things here. Position of the pocket clip, I'm not really gonna count off of that. It's pretty good, right? 
It's gonna be a little bit long for some people. It's gonna be illegal for some people, right? Because of the blade length. If you live in the United States, if you live outside the United States, it's probably illegal for a lot of reasons. Um, I really, really would have loved a tumbled finish on this. I think it would have looked better with the whole presentation. It would have made me feel a little bit better about spending $195 on this, which is what this is gonna cost. It's not a bad price, right? It's just like, I don't necessarily want it to cost less. I want it to have a more premium. It's like, that's fine. Ask that much. Cause it's, it, you're in the right ballpark, but just at the finish. I think the finish would look better. I mean, are you with me? Sometimes those slightly reflective tumbled finishes not only look better with certain aesthetics, in my opinion, they look better with all aesthetics, right? Uh, I mean, if we're going, if we're choosing between satin and like hand rub satin, that's totally different. But if we're talking about the machine, belt satin finish versus a nice semi-reflective, you know, tumbling. I think the tumbling looks better, right? That would have made me feel a little bit better. In its current form though, is 195 bucks a fair price for this? Yeah, sure, right? I think 175 out of million, wow, great. But it's like I always say, everything on earth could be $20 cheaper and make me $20 happier right at any given time 195 bucks not bad wish it was tumbled um wish the pocket clip was a little bit deeper wish we had done away with this screw and the lanyard hole and maybe just put a bar back there but i'm getting real nitpicky here guys this is uh just as if not more recommendable than the original version i've said this many times i'm starting to lean into Liner locks, even though they've been around forever, just like frame locks, right? I'm starting to lean into the whole, I think liner locks are a little bit better for day-to-day -day use than frame locks. I just think that they are. This is not exposed over here. The lock is not exposed. You can put your hands wherever you want, which is great, especially on this knife, right? Because the the, the uh, profile of the handle is so thin, you would have minimal, in fact, you do have very minimal room on the frame lock version of this knife right? To get your hands in the right spots. You're not putting excess pressure on that lock bar and making it difficult to flip. It's better. And no matter how hard you squeeze it, you're not affecting the lock up at all. The lock up is just the lock up. So as long as you're not doing something dumb with your knife, you're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. Recommendable knife. Absolutely. Yes. You're going to have to pick it up on the, I don't know why uh, Giant Mouse doesn't have these at other retailers. If they do, I'm not aware of it, but yeah, uh, they should have these at other retailers. Right now it's just the giant mouse website, but recommendable. Which was the, the price doesn't blow me away, but it's good, right? If you pick this knife up, you're gonna be happy with it. Again, this is a Riot made knife. It's not. It's it's good quality, absolutely. That's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks again to the Knife Eclectic for sending this in for review. Um, please make sure to follow. There's my big card. Follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.